it is my pleasure to formally announce that the New Jersey Hall of Fame has chosen American Dream as its permanent museum home. The hall has signed a 45-year lease with the Triple Five companies for 16,000 square foot of space. The hall will be adjacent to and within a two to five minute walk to world-class attractions and much more. This is a long time coming and it couldn't have worked out better for us. We're about to create what I regard as the ultimate symbol of Jersey pride. A place where we can all take great satisfaction in who we are as a people. And at the same time, New Jersey has an opportunity to showcase our greatness to 40 million people that are going through that American dream complex. Our property will provide a unique opportunity for the people from all across the United States and the world to see the rich and enormous contributions and extraordinary talent of the great men and women who have become a part of the New Jersey Hall of Fame. I look forward to uh, breaking ground today, and I look forward to New Jerseyans really having a place that they can call their own. You know, we've had a mobile, but this is going to give us a real root in a place that's going to attract an estimated 40 million visitors a year. And now we'll get the word out about what a great place New Jersey is. Thankfully for the Triple Five to allow the New Jersey Hall of Fame to have a home, a museum, to showcase some really awesome people. We want to make our kids proud that you know they come from New Jersey and that people in their neighborhoods you know have accomplished great things and it just gives them a vision that you know so can they and hopefully motivation and make us proud for what we're doing. And I just want to say on behalf of New Jersey, Tony, uh, to the Garmazian family, to Rafi, uh, to Debbie and Lincoln who are here, thank you so much. It's a, an incredible opportunity for the state of New Jersey. And we're going to find ways for many years to come to continue to thank Triple Five and the American Dream Complex. Good morning. Thank you uh, for being here at the Meadowlands on this historic day. My name is Steve Edwards. I'm the president of the Hall of Fame. Specifically, I want to thank our political leaders that are here, the media, our beloved founders, corporate sponsors, board members, professionals, and family of supporters. Thank you all. It's a great day for the New Jersey Hall of Fame and a great day for the state of New Jersey. And I think when everyone is done listening to our esteemed speakers, you'll realize it's a great day for you and your families. A little heads up on the agenda, we have about 40 minutes worth of remarks. We're gonna to try to do it even less. It's a hot, muggy day. We weren't expecting that curveball. That's life. Uh, then the actual groundbreaking ceremony and then we invite everyone to stay for a tour of the Mobile Museum so you can get a sense for what the permanent museum is going to look like. And perhaps the best part about that is it's air conditioned. So I think you're going to be ready for it at the end. This is uh, a long time coming for a lot of people here in the state. I just asked my wife that it is a long time coming. I looked at Wikipedia when we first started the Hall of Fame. The European Union was expanding by 10 members. Facebook was just taking off, but we stuck with it. We were patient. And I'm glad we were patient because we found the right location. And it's so true in life. You just sometimes have to be patient. Things do work out for the best, and it couldn't have worked out better for us. Before we delve into our program, some background on the Hall of Fame. New Jersey Hall of Fame mission is to celebrate this great state, it's to honor our legends, and it's to inspire our children. And in that regard, we've accomplished a lot. We've had 10 star-studded induction ceremonies that have generated extensive positive publicity for the state of New Jersey. But we're much more than a glamour night. We have, educationally, we have a state-of-the-art Michael Graves, Ralph Applebaum, mobile museum that you see behind me, uh, that more than 300,000 people over the past three years have toured. Uh, it is what we dub the field trip on wheels. We have an educational plan that includes a scholarship program, a curriculum program, and a legacy project that is capturing the amazing stories of our inductees and in their words. Now we're about to create what I regard as the ultimate symbol of Jersey pride, a place where we can all take great satisfaction in who we are as a people, and at the same time, New Jersey has an opportunity to showcase our greatness to 40 million people that are going through that American dream complex. And I believe it is, in fact, one of the premier entertainment complexes, perhaps, in all the world. 
American Dream is a place that I regard as the center of universe for fun in New Jersey, perhaps the Northeast. And my six and 10 year old daughters will attest to that notion. They keep asking me, when is Legoland gonna be open, Daddy? They don't ask me about the Hall of Fame, much to my dismay. I'll be taking uh, time later in our program to thank, that's really the most important part of today, um, who the folks are that truly made today possible. But at this point, I wanna go back to the beginning and introduce you to the original sponsor of the New Jersey Hall of Fame bill, Senator Paul Sarlo. Remember that conversation, Senator? Good morning, everybody, to all of our distinguished guests, to our county exec and our freeholders are here from Bergen County and to my good friend, Speaker Coughlin. Thank you for all coming out and welcome to my district here in the heart of the Meadowlands. Um, when I look back, Steve, I remember those conversations. They were often, they were morning, night, even overnight sometimes. Steve and, and, and others uh, were very forceful about the need to reconstitute then the Sports Hall of Fame into the New Jersey Hall of Fame. And to think back, it was about 2003 when Senator Krillis and in a bipartisan manner in the Senate and Assemblyman Cryan, we got together and we ran a bill through the legislature that received bipartisan support, unanimous support, to create the New Jersey Hall of Fame. And I always knew back then in 2003 that one day we would find ourselves here in the Meadowlands. Why? Because the Meadowlands is a place, in my opinion, that so many leaders, political leaders, sports figures, entertainment figures, scientists, one way or another, people have walked through the various facilities and doors through this complex over the years and over the decades and decades. So today we find ourselves here at this groundbreaking for this new Hall of Fame uh, as part of this multi-complex entertainment complex that will hopefully set us apart uh, from many states. And when you think back at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they had multiple classes that were inducted before they actually physically built the, uh, the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So. We are, we are just on par with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and so many other Hall of Fames across this great country. This is an exciting day for the people of New Jersey. It's an exciting day for the people who live and work in the Meadowlands area. And I just want to thank all the sponsors, all those who have raised monies over the years for the great causes that support the New Jersey Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you for all of you for making this a reality today. God bless. Um, our next speaker. Uh, is someone that um, Governor Christie appointed to the Hall of Fame board several years ago. I knew him as a Yankee legend, as a Mets legend, a baseball legend. Uh, what I found out once he got on board, though, is he is a great guy who gets it. And uh, one of the first things our next speaker said to me when I met him is, what do you need financially? He took his checkbook out. Very few people do that. Uh, his heart has always been in the right place. And he's been an MVP, no pun intended, um, for the Hall of Fame. Uh, he really is the reason, when you get right down to it, one of the main reasons that we're here today, because he introduced us to the person he's about to introduce. Give a big, warm round of applause to Yankee Mets legend and New Jersey Hall of Fame inductee, Al Leiter. Did you know uh, Steve could do like 10,000 push-ups? <laughs> or is it pull-ups? Pull-ups, he's the pull-up national champ. Who would have thunk it? There's no chance this big body's winning pull-up. Bart, this is awesome. Steve, thank you for inviting me to introduce the next person because while I was a little bit of a thorn in the side of Steve once Governor Christie put me on the transition team and then eventually uh, with the Hall of Fame, uh, the next person is the reason why that we're gonna have a permanent home here at American Dream, an amazing facility. It's not just a mall, it's not just retail. I can't wait for this to open. I'm with you, Mr. Starlow, that this is an amazing place. I'm sure there's different parts of this state that probably thought maybe location-wise it may have been better to have a New Jersey Hall of Fame in their town, but this is gonna be fantastic. And I think mostly my contribution and my, th my pain has been, having played 19 years in the major leagues and I've been play teammates with a lot of players, that I always felt like I defended our state. Why I felt compelled to do that, I'm not sure. I gave up probably about 15 years into it. That we know, all of us that are from New Jersey or have lived here a long time, that this is a great state. And the proud people 
fellow, fellow, I'm very grateful and honored to be part of this Hall of Fame, but the fellow people that have been inducted in this Hall of Fame, it's going to be shown beautifully with class. This museum is going to be terrific and it's going to be interactive, it's going to be entertaining, it's going to be a, a learning experience. And uh, while I'm happy that this is here, I'm also happy that, that we have a, a presence in Newark Airport because many people who aren't from here will have a chance to see our great state, if you will. The next person, Mr. Hansen, he doesn't like me referring to him as Mr. Hansen, but he is every bit of that. Got a chance to meet him when Governor Christie put me on the transition team. And because of John Hansen and his uh, longtime ties with, uh, with the state, particular Governor Kane, when he was head of the New Jersey Sports and Exhibition Authority that brought the New Jersey New York Jets, where's, where's our Jets guy? Here, helped bring them here, and also the, the New Jersey Devils. Mr. Hansen also is a, a Yankee fan, very much so. He was telling me who was going to pitch in the first game of the uh, wild card, or the only wild card game. Um, when you're around him, and I know many of you know him, you know that he is a, um, he's a, he's a, he's a wonderful person and, and, and a man that you know that can get things done. And the reason why we are here today with this groundbreaking is because of John Hansen. Mr. Hansen. And I'm happy to see Joe Bucklew is here. Joe and I have gone back over 30 years. In fact, we had a famous tennis match that almost ended in a brawl. He thought it was in, I thought it was out, or maybe I thought it was out, he thought it was in, and every time we, we greet each other, I'll say to him, it was in, and he'll say it was out. So, Joe, it's, it was, <laughs> so it's, it's good to see you. And yes, I am a Yankee fan. I have the privilege of serving on the board of the New York Yankees, uh, and Al and I once in a while compare, compare notes, notes on it. Uh, and when I look out at the Izod Arena, it reminds me that I think somewhere around 35 years ago, I had the privilege of being on the ice when the Devils played the, their, their first game here. So that was a fun negotiation with Dr. John McMullen. Um, I think we won at first, but he won later after, after because whatever deal we negotiated, he came back and he renegotiated. He tired you out, but it was, it was good to do that. And one more item of ancient history. Does anyone remember what this tie is? So this morning, I was getting dressed, and I looked over and I said, I haven't worn that tie, and I figured it out in about 30 years, and on the back it says it was made exclusively for the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority by Tiffany. So I thought about it, and so since I have the, the privilege and the honor of being elected into the Hall of Fame, I think I'm going to give them my tie that can go into the Hall of Fame because nobody else has got a tie that's this old. It must be 30, 30 years old. So it's been a, a, a pleasure to be here at the Meadowlands, as, as Senator Sarlo said. Uh, this, there's a lot of history that's here in, in the Meadowlands, a lot of people that I've had the privilege to work with. Uh, you mentioned before the, the Jets, well, I had the privilege of working with Leon Hess uh, to negotiate the deal to come here. And if Leon were alive today, we wouldn't have to worry about money because we, I was involved in the location of the College Football Hall of Fame in South Bend. And he said, if you had told me about it, I would have had it built in New Jersey. So I miss Leon for many, many reasons, but it would make it easier than to have to raise money from a lot of sources if we could have one such as, uh, such as he. Now for my formal remarks, it is my pleasure to formally announce that the New Jersey Hall of Fame has chosen American Dream as its permanent museum home. The hall has signed a 45-year lease with the Triple Five companies for 16,000 square foot of space the hall will be adjacent to and within a two to five minute walk to world class attractions such as Legoland, Discovery Center, Sea Life Aquarium, a Nickelodeon theme park, a DreamWorks theme water park, Kidzania, and much more. As mentioned before, 40 million people are expected to pass by our doors every year. Now, candidly, I hear they got 40 uh, million people in the Mall of America. I think we can beat that, but well, time will tell, but I think we'll be fine. 
Um, we anticipate that the ribbon cutting on our new museum will take place by the summer of 2020. And the New Jersey Hall of Fame, an American dream, will be a state-of-the-art museum that will feature the latest in museum technology, including a Jersey Pride movie theater, a hologram show that will include some of New Jersey's most iconic personalities. One of the items that will be, that will be here in the Hall of Fame on a permanent basis is the Model T Ford that Henry Ford gifted to Thomas Edison in 1928. Uh, if you have the opportunity today, feel, uh, feel free to glance at our renderings, which are on both sides of the room. As you see, the New Jersey Hall of Fame has an exciting vision, and ultimately this museum will be a very popular attraction for New Jerseyans of all ages and for families around the world who will be able to experience it in all its greatness. We expect the New Jersey Hall of Fame to be a popular field trip for students across the state and place where all New Jerseyans can take pride in who they are as people. Our initial goal is to have at least six million people come through our, our museum. And I want to particularly thank the generosity of Triple Five and the Germasian families uh, for accommodating us in, in this space. And here, representing the Triple Five group is a man I got to know during the last nine, eight to nine years when I was involved with the negotiations that brought uh, the Triple Five group to, to the Meadowlands. And uh, Tony Armlin, native of, of uh, Albany, I told him if you get this project done on time and on budget, you too might be coming to the New Jersey Hall of Fame. So everybody, well, please welcome Tony Armlin. I want to um, start by, by saying, um, uh, on behalf of American Dream and Triple Five and the Gramazian family, I'd like to welcome you all to this important event and to the American Dream Project. It's so exciting to see so many uh, important leaders from government and business and those in charge of the development and promotion of the state's educational, cultural, and historic resources to be here with us today uh, for this event. It's our great pleasure to, he to be here welcoming the New Jersey Hall of Fame to become our newest and very important part of the American Dream experience. We began discussion several years ago with Steve Edwards uh, and following an introduction from John Hansen uh, to talk about a new potential home. And from our very first meeting, we were so enthralled with the vision that the Hall of Fame had and the importance of it to the state and our ability to present, excuse the noise, and our, and our ability to present uh, on a world-class stage what New Jersey can bring to the, has brought to the world and its inductees have uh, contributed to for over so many years. The Hall of Fame will complement and enhance our property's exceptional offering of entertainment, performing arts, culinary, and retail experiences, and will provide our visitors the opportunity to see and experience the diverse and remarkable achievements of the Hall of Fame, indu Hall of Fame inductees. With over 40 million visits annually, our property will provide a unique opportunity for the people, from people from all across the United States and the world to see the rich and enormous contributions and extraordinary talent of the great men and women who have become a part of the New Jersey Hall of Fame. We're very proud to be the, new, the Fame's new permanent home, and it would not have happened but for the efforts of, of Steve Edwards, uh, his leadership team, and of course John Hansen bringing us together and we're very much looking forward to uh, the Hall of Fame being one of the main attractions of our facility and be complementing our, uh, our music parks, our water park, uh, the, um, the Lego Sea Life uh, entertainment uh, complex uh, that's immediately adjacent to their facility, um, our Cirque du Soleil Theater, our Cinemax complex, Kidzania, and all of our multiple retail tenants and, and culinary arts um, provisions here at, at the site. It's, uh, it's a phenomenal asset to the property and we hope that the property will bring million and mil millions and millions of visits to the Hall of Fame. And I just want to say on behalf of New Jersey, Tony, uh, to the Garmazian family, to Rafi, uh, to Debbie and Lincoln who are here, thank you so much. It's a, an incredible opportunity for the state of New Jersey and we're going to find ways for many years to come to continue to thank Triple Five and the American Dream uh, Complex. I also want to say thank you to John Hansen because really we would not be here if it wasn't for John. 
I kid around and I say John is becoming a sort of a mentor to me. Unfortunately, he doesn't consider me to be a protege, but I consider him to be a mentor. He gets one too many emails from me. I'm a pain in the neck. Um, so our next speaker is someone that I've personally known for the past 20 years. And when I first met him, and 10 years later, and even now that he's the speaker of the assembly, he's always been the same guy to me, a classy guy, an intelligent guy, someone who is Jersey real, someone who has Jersey in his heart and in his soul. Please welcome the Speaker of the Assembly, Craig Coughlin. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, it's a pleasure to see my friend, uh, Speaker Prieto, who's here with us today, and my dear friend, Senator Sarlo. Good to see you all as well. Uh, we're here today, as, uh, today is the product of a lot of hard work and dedication and commitment. And so I want to take this opportunity to, stay, to thank uh, Steve Edwards and John Hansen, and a special thanks to my very dear friend Gary Taffet, who was the person who uh, brought me to this project, come to understand the importance of, of what the Hall of Fame Museum is going to, going to be. And so it's nice to be here um, on this very exciting occasion. You know, the New Jersey Hall of Fame Museum has been a mobile a museum for most of its existence, but it's finally going to have a home in the American dream, and I can't imagine uh, a more fitting location or partnership. Well, I actually can, because Middlesex, where I'm from, is right in the middle of the state, uh, but we don't have the American dream. And the American dream, which is scheduled to open next year, is, is just that, a dream. A world-class retail and entertainment designation, destination and a, a tourist attraction in and, of, in and of itself. Uh, that will benefit both the region and the state. Estimated 40 million visitors a year. Uh, and it's really exciting to know that, that this is where the New Jersey Hall of Fame will put down its roots. And I'm delighted that the state was able in, it, in the budget this year to, to contribute to that, uh, that worthy cause and effort. Uh, it is really something that we all ought to be proud of. And this is because this is going to be a place uh, where we can celebrate and pay homage to the exceptional New Jerseyans who have made such a, a wonderful, significant contribution to society. You know, the museum will also serve as a reminder of, of how much New Jersey has contributed to, the, to American history and how much it still has to offer. You know, sometimes we get lost in the shadows of our friends in New York and in the southern part in Philadelphia, and oft times we're recognized uh, our state is as in a limited pop culture sort of way and sometimes not very good. And I get it. And we're from New Jersey. We're tough. We can laugh at ourselves a little bit. But mostly we can do that because we know what a great place that New Jersey is and what an incredibly rich history that we have. More battles in the American Revolution were fought and won in New Jersey than in any other state. New Jersey played an integral part uh, in the uh, th escape of thousands of slaves through the, from the southern, northern southern states through the Underground Railroad. And the Industrial Revolution was born right here in New Jersey in Patterson, fueled by the Great Falls. And then there's the people. Look at the list of inductees in the Hall of Fame. Let's start with Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Clara Barton, Harriet Tubman, a guy named Bruce Springsteen, and not to mention the honorees that are here today, Harlan Gorman and, and Al Leiter. They're all masters in their respective fields, and they've left their mark on the American culture. It's wonderful to know that because of the, the work of, of the folks here at the American Dream and the leaders of the Hall of Fame Museum, that people from all over the country and probably from the world uh, will come here to learn about New Jersey's most prominent figures. But mostly, I hope, that the people of New Jersey, New Jersey residents, will bring their children here so they know that New Jersey breeds greatness. I hope they will come uh, and be inspired by the inductees who, like them, grew up in New Jersey or live here, and like them, had dreams that they worked tirelessly to fulfill. I hope visitors will not only leave with a more accurate understanding of our Garden State and its people, but be inspired to achieve their own greatness. Thank you all. I look forward to this great project. Uh, to echo what the speaker said, New Jersey Hall of Fame and American Dream will be an educational and cultural institution that will last for the ages and have an immeasurable impact on the pride of New Jerseyans. And a special place where children, people of all ages, can realize their highest and best sense of selves with a moral excellence of character. 
Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates referred to that concept as arete. Arete means the act of actualizing your highest best sense with a moral excellence of character. And when you look at what our inductees have done, that's exactly what they have done. Uh, they're a role model, they're an inspiration, and a Hall of Fame wants all people across New Jersey, all ages, all ethnic groups, to realize their highest best sense of self. And that is ultimately the point of this mobile, of the permanent, of our induction, of everything that we do. So we're all in on Jersey pride. We're all in on establishing an emotional connection to New Jersey at a time when we need to do that the most. We're all in on inspiration. We owe that to our children more than ever. None of this would have been accomplished or nothing else will be accomplished without the people, though, that I'm about to mention, the men and women who are state leaders who deserve our praise. I mentioned John Hansen. I also want to take a moment before I thank sort of in a rapid fire succession, a couple of people uh, to stand up if you don't mind. A former, you weren't captain of the 86 Super Bowl Giants. Everybody says that, but former center with the 86 Super Bowl Giants, Bart Oates and John Keegan and uh, Lorena. Please stand up. Bart, Bart and John are our chairman emeritus of the Hall of Fame. Lorena has been indispensable for the Hall of Fame for many, many years. Um, you guys have been my center and my uh, a sage advisor, and I thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jim Kirkos is here. You could hold applause to the end. Jim got the ball rolling as well uh, here, and we appreciate that. I want to thank all the board members that are here and that are not here. Uh, too many to name, or this is going to turn into an Academy Award speech. But I do want to point out one board member who's been an MVP as of late, Gary Taffet, former Chief of Staff to, to the Governor. Stand up, Gary. Take a bow. So a lot of uh, board members that are not here, I want to thank them. I want to thank uh, Vinnie Prieto, uh, who is one of the original sponsors of well of the Hall of Fame bill, uh, Wayne Hassenbog, and all of the staff at the NJSEA. Uh, all of our many volunteers and family of supporters, many of whom are not here, in order to have gotten to this point, it really literally took two, three hundred people that have stuck with it, and I am profoundly grateful uh, that they did. We have a few people, though, that are here, like Gary Gelman and Steve Gorlick. Thank you very much. A production team, you know, it's a fire drill every year to put on one of those inductions. Uh, we've got many, many men and women that have helped us to do that. Lauren McCauley is here from uh, Madison Marquette down in Asbury Park. Uh, Gary Matola couldn't be here, but you guys have done so much for us over the years. Um, we've got many sponsors, some here that I'm going to mention, but some not. It takes money to make a nonprofit go round, and I, we've got so many people in that regard to thank. I want to thank uh, Governors Christie and uh, Governor Murphy, who could be here as Chief of Staff. He's supposed to, I don't know if he made it, uh, but um, Governor was at our last event in rare form, being very funny with the, the one-liners. He did uh, the original, uh, he did the press conference announcement back in December. He's going to be at many more events. We thank you. I want to thank the media in the back and around the room you kept this Hall of Fame alive for many years by writing about us, covering our events, and keeping us relevant. We thank you. Um, I want to thank Norris Clark, Lisa Fielding, Tom Skeven, Carolyn, Ethan, all of the PSC staff, uh, Princeton Strategic Communications, for all that you have done and all that you will do. Um, I want to thank, wherever he is, Les, the driver of this mobile museum, who gets up 5.30 every morning, that's God knocking the conceptuals over, reminding me you to tell that we still have to raise $4 million. That was a reminder from God. I want you to keep that in mind. Nobody's laughing, though, John. Um, so I do uh, want to thank Les for all he did. And last but not least, I want to thank my executive assistant. She's the, the North Star of the Hall of Fame, Brenda DeSantis. Let's give it up for Brenda. She truly keeps the trains running on time, and I am forever grateful, Brenda. Uh, if I miss anyone, it's an oversight. Uh, more important than mentioning your name today is making sure that we do raise four more million dollars. We've got 5.775 million raised toward a capital campaign goal of 10 million. We're 100% confident we're going to get to 10 million or we wouldn't be here today. But it'll be a hustle. We're going to try to do it by the end of the year, maybe you know, creep in a little bit into next year. But we're going to get it done. And when we do, 
uh, one of the first things we're going to build, Ray and Ed, is going to be a granite wall to put up the names of all the men and women who made that possible. And we'll be horizontal to one another. No one's getting special treatment. And when that name is there, you're going to be able to take great pride in walking your families through so they can see when you're gone. Uh, one of the nice things about this Hall of Fame, as far as I'm concerned, is that we're creating a museum that my six and ten year old will be able to walk through one day when I'm not here and be able to see what daddy was all about and to see what life, in my view, is all about.